Well, my next two guests, they've seen these shelters. Manny Fernandez, who's the Houston Bureau Chief for the New York Times, also with me. Texas State Representative Mary Gonzalez. Her district includes the so-called tent city in Torneo, Texas, at the point port of entry. Manny, you've been inside these shelters. Talk me through the conditions. Sure. Um, I visited the Walmart shelter in Brownsville last week. Um, giant, huge facility, uh, pretty loud, a lot of kids. Imagine, you know, uh, a cafeteria, the school cafeteria right before lunch. Um, uh, but they spent a lot of money uh, refurbishing that, that uh, shelter. Uh, bedrooms, uh, barbershop, um, cafeteria, uh, murals on the walls. Uh, medical rooms. There were registered nurses walking around in scrubs. Uh, Tens of millions of dollars. Mary, talk me through what you've toured in your area because when you think about the money being spent for these tent cities following Trump's zero tolerance policy, I often think, imagine if that money went to your district. That's exactly my point. So we heard that this contract in my district is a $10 million 30-day contract. And in one of the poorest city towns in all of Texas, this town has had arsenic in their water for decades. Many people don't have wastewater infrastructure. So what I'm fighting for is people for the ability to flush their toilet, no gas, no stormwater infrastructure. So $10 million for 30 days could have truly transformed my district. And so my question is, what are the priorities? Are we... Our, is, is our country's priority not having clean water and instead putting kids in tents in my district? So what are your constituents say? Because the argument that these migrants are hurting Americans, Americans in your district who have arsenic in their water might say, I'm already being hurt. Support me, not this. Exactly. I think that it... it I think my constituents are saying two things. One, I do have constituents who have called and said, I know the tents are for the young kids, but after that, are they going to come after us? I think that the tent city on the border really creates a lot of fear. And the second thing is, is we all know, specifically in my district, that this is a, a a created problem. It is a consequence of a zero tolerance family separation policy that does not need to exist. And so the questions are, are why are we doing this really? Okay, Manny, I got to talk about the girls because the government, really, they, they have not released any images of girls or toddlers. We're looking for them. But you tweeted this, a, a photo of a toddler that's about 12 months old. That's a year old in a shelter in Brownsville. And I know we haven't verified this photo, but talk me through what's happening here. Sure. Um, it is a real photo. It was uh, supplied to me by the person who took it. It's a person I trust. It wasn't a random stranger at all. Someone I trust was in that shelter in Brownsville and took that photo and gave me that photo. What you're seeing is uh, a shelter in Brownsville where there are about uh, 80 children, uh, many of them young girls, uh, and many of them uh, infants and toddlers. Uh, and here you have uh, uh, a l little girl who's about one years old. Um, you know, it is. Uh, clean. You see the booties on their on their shoes. There is that concern. Um, but a lot of the, a, a lot of the people that visit these shelters, they come away not talking about the conditions. They come away talking about the situation, and it's the situation and the Trump policy that has really sparked the outrage, not as much the conditions. We just continue to ask the question: Why ethically? politically, uh, uh, financially, why do this? I want to bring in Cal Perry. Cal is outside the tent city in Torneo, Texas. Cal, tell us what you see there. In my few days here, I've been desperate to get inside a center and had no opportunity to do so. We are still desperate to get inside this tent city. I'm going to have Carrie push in. You're going to see security now. They were just checking us out. This is the best angle that we have been able to find. We came down a dirt county road. We were initially moved back um, by the Customs and Border Police. Then the sheriff's office stepped in and allowed us to do this live shot. It, it speaks to the fact that, Stephanie, I do not think there was a plan to deal with the influx of the unaccompanied minors. We believe there's somewhere around 200 of them inside this tent city that you're looking at right now. But again, 
again, we're dealing with very sketchy information here because we are not being allowed in. As you know, we report on political strife around the world. This is a first. My saying to you, the United States government is not telling us what's going on inside this tent city. One more thing I want to add, Stephanie, the weather very different where we are as opposed to where you are. We're some 800 miles away. It's going to be 105 to 110 degrees here today. Very concerning, obviously, if you're in one of these tents. Mary, uh, you know these tent cities and Texas is a red state. Again, I ask you the question, why do we have this tent city? We have the tent city because there's an overflow of kids in the licensed facilities that we have now in Texas. There are over 5,000 kids, kids that are in the licensed facilities. So what they ended up doing is with the overflow, the 16 and 17 year old boys were moved to Tornillo. When I went in, we snuck in actually, because we didn't have permission either. We, we saw that there were, there were tents, 20 kids per tent. Thank God they have air conditioning, but that's not the point. The point is tents are dehumanizing the human beings to children, to kids. And so um, it, it is just unfathomable that we'd rather separate. For example, we heard the story of a 10 year old Down syndrome girl um, from her family and put boys in tents just to create a policy. And I will say this. I think it is intentional that that people are not allowed in. Why else would we not take a press it tour and say, hey, press, um, look at what's happening here. And so I think there's an attempt to create more chaos to push a political agenda. All right, let's take the chaos out. Let's take the politics out. Let's make sure these children are safe. Before we go, again, I just want to implore First Lady Melania Trump, First Daughter Ivanka Trump, come down here. If, I can't, if we can't see the cities, maybe you can. I know dedicated mothers care, and we've got to stick together. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.